folks, it's Mary, aka Mercy Triumphs, and this is my channel, Slow Crochet. Today I am bringing you a different kind of video, but it's an idea that I've had rattling around in my brain for a while now, and I thought I might as well just throw it out there and see what happens. I hope that you are as amused by this idea as I am. As you gathered from the title of this video, I am sharing with you three ideas that I have for incorporating more intentional movement into our crochet. Now, major disclaimer, I am not a trained exercise instructor at all. I'm just an enthusiastic participant in crochet and a little bit of exercise, particularly related to the ballet influenced bar classes. So as I was taking one of my classes, I was thinking about how often with my hands, I could be crocheting. And then I was thinking about how sedentary crochet seems to be. You know, we kind of joke about like Netflix and crochet or binge watching something as we crochet or knit or whatever. And I thought, well, there's other things that we could do, especially if we're needing to take a break or get up and stretch, why not just be intentional with adding a little bit of movement into our crochet experience? And what would that look like? There are three different categories of movement that I came up with to kind of broadly talk about some things that you could technically do while you're crocheting. Now caveat here, you're not going to want a project that you have to count a lot or follow a pattern. This has to be a little bit mindless. And in the examples that I'm sharing with you today, I'm actually doing some slip stitches, which take a lot of time for me in general. So technically I am crocheting. I'm just not going very fast. So let's get started. The first category of movement that I want to talk about is what I'm calling bends. And by bend, I mean you're holding your body, your torso completely erect, your head is going up towards the ceiling, your shoulders are relaxed and down, and the only thing that you're moving is your legs. So in a ballet term, that might be a plie, a very basic bend at the knees, up and down, where the knees kind of rotate outwards from the hips, and you're just going up and down. You might pick your heel up off of the floor. That's challenging some movement in a different way. Or you might step out to a wider stance and continue with some bends. Maybe you'll go low for a minute and stay there. Maybe you will go up on your toes and try to balance there, or even try to go up on your toes and bend from there. Or you'll go up on your toes and bring your heels together and bend from there. You could also have your feet parallel and do some very basic bends as well. You could do squats as well. You could do lunges, um, any of those types of things that you're comfortable with where you are bending your knees, but basically keeping your torso soft and tall and steady. The second category that I want to talk about is what I am calling balance. So balance is a little bit self-explanatory, but it's just any kind of motions that might challenge your balance. And it will challenge you because your hands are still crocheting. So one form of balance could be as simple as just going up on your toes. It could be that you begin with a bend and then come back up to what is referred to as a passe, where one knee is pointed out towards the side, your toe is pointing in, and you're steady on your standing leg. It could be as complicated as an arabesque, where you are standing on one leg, your other is pointed out, and you're tipping over, and you're still keeping yourself steady on that one leg. It might even be something like a leg lift up to the side or slightly out behind you or even ahead of you. Just make sure that your hips feel comfortable in what you're doing, that you're not twisting too much and you're still trying to keep yourself upright. Your shoulders are still relaxed. Your head is lengthening up towards the ceiling. And if you tip over a little bit, that's okay. And maybe for you, balance is keeping two feet planted firmly on the ground and just allowing yourself to relax into a really good posture. A lot of times in crochet, we get so hunched over in on ourselves and we forget to just ro roll our shoulders back and down, open up our chest to breathe, and let our hands take the bulk of the stress of what we're doing rather than getting us so hunched up and tight. The third category of things that you could do to add a little more movement into your crochet falls under the category of back. And by that, I quite literally mean things that you can do while lying on your back. This to me is a lot of fun. You can be on your back while your kids are watching a movie or hanging out on the couch. So while you're on your back, you can do several different things. You can do any number of crunches or sit-ups, things of that nature. Personally, I am not able to do a lot of that, um, but 
one thing that I can do is work on my legs and it actually does work your core as you work your legs. So that could mean moving one leg up one at a time and alternating the two. You could alternate straightening your leg, lifting it up, lowering it, and then bending it back to a neutral position. You could also take your legs and scissor them back and forth, back and forth as you go up and then all the way back down. You'd be surprised how much you feel it in your lower abdomen. You can kind of see me wiggling and wobbling there. You could also do any kind of bridges where you lift your hips up and you're holding yourself steady there. Or you could try any kind of crunches or moving your shoulders up or lifting your head up off of the floor. But do make sure that you are working to keep your head in alignment with your shoulders as you do any of those types of things. You could also come over to your side and perhaps lift one leg at a time. Maybe find an interesting position where you can challenge your hips to, uh, to strengthen and stretch. Or you could just lie flat on your back and enjoy the fact that we have a magnificent craft that we're able to participate in and just allow your whole body to kind of sink into the ground and feel that peace and that relaxation. So I hope that I have made you laugh. I hope that I've inspired you a little bit or maybe I've just caused you to think for a minute. Let me know in the comments if you ever try to get in motion while you crochet. Again, I am not a professional. I'm just a very enthusiastic class participant. And if there are any professionals, feel free to clarify or critique any of my form because I do not at all pretend that I am a professional there. So happy to be corrected so people don't get hurt. But. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope that you've enjoyed yourself as much as I have. And uh, if I'm not your cup of tea, thank you for listening this long. I do appreciate it. And I do hope I'll see you again soon. Bye.